a presentation here, part one of what is actually a joint presentation, but my role is really limited here to that of the uh, jester who uh, warms up the audience for the main act of the show. So I will simply uh, briefly introduce you to uh, Antonio Sanderus. Uh, Sanderus was active roughly in the uh, first uh, half of the uh, 17th century. Uh, he was a historian and a, a poet uh, born in Antwerp, but uh, his, uh, the family is actually from Ghent and he moved to Ghent shortly after his uh, birth. So Ghent is really his native, uh, his native uh, city. Studied at the uh, University of uh, Douai in the French uh, speaking part of the county of uh, Flanders and then moved on to an ecclesiastical uh, career in various places, particularly also in the county of uh, Flanders. Sanderus wrote uh, quite a lot actually, uh, little of which has been studied in any uh, way, uh, but uh, the uh, most important part of his uh, oeuvre is certainly the uh, two last items there in the list, collective biographies and bibliographies and historical geographical uh, treatises. And these two sections are not only the most important part of his oeuvre, uh, I would argue, but they also need to be seen and understood in close uh, conjunction. Uh, and you can see that, for instance, when you take a look at his writings on Ghent, that came about more or less in the same uh, years and in parallel to each other. So we have there a large uh, treatise on the history and the antiquities of uh, Ghent uh, with quite a complex uh, publication uh, history I won't go into. Uh, uh, the next uh, is a uh, uh, writing on the uh, people from Ghent who were famous on account of their erudition. You see published in the same year as uh, Gandavum. And then thirdly, we have a survey of the saints of uh, Flanders, uh, a work also originally uh, focused on uh, Ghent and actually uh, Ghent uh, takes up most of the space in this, uh, in this uh, uh, survey. Uh, Sanderos himself uh, emphasizes in the preface of De Ganda Vencibus uh, that uh, these three works need to be seen together actually, that they are three facets of one and the same uh, uh, project. And it is uh, to uh, look forward to, to uh, Alexander's uh, paper from works uh, such as De Ganda Vencibus uh, that uh, Sanderos will develop uh, a more comprehensive uh, um, uh, survey of writers uh, from Flanders, Scriptores Flandriae, and that is the work Alexander will focus on in a, in a moment. So what we see here is not just a mere combination of uh, history and uh, geography in what is basically an ancient uh, tradition called uh, horography. The term itself also is uh, classical and appears in the geographer uh, Strabo. But we have here more um, specifically a, um, a interlocking of uh, space and history along the lines of the work of Biondo Flavio, a humanist uh, from the 15th century, uh, the initiator of what we might call uh, historical uh, geography, but it is an historical geography in a very specific uh, sense of the of the term. Um, he worked on Rome and Italy, devoted a number of important uh, works on um, Rome and Italy, and in that work he uh, created uh, Roma and Italia as uh, paradigmatic cultural spaces, as uh, idealized notions uh, rather than uh, geographical or topographical uh, entities. And uh, his approach is uh, characterized also by a consistent uh, focus on civitates, on the cities as organized communities shaped by institutions and uh, persons. And it is in that sense that uh, he uh, talks about both places and persons and the two reinforce each other, so to speak. They go intimately uh, together. And all this work culminates uh, in a large uh, treatise, which might be called the first uh, comprehensive um, uh, historical geography of uh, uh, Italy, Italia Illustrata, uh, from the middle of the uh, 15th century. And the title itself uh, presupposes an illustratio of Italy uh, that embodies in uh, Biondo's uh, mind uh, two facets, um, um, uh, elucidation, uh, explanation in commentary mode. Uh, and you see actually that in that work, uh, the uh, persons and the places he talks about serve as lemmata, which are commented upon. 
And at the same time, uh, the work is also a glorification, a celebration of Italy, very much in the manner of a specific literary tradition, uh, that of the Laus Urbis, uh, the praise of a uh, city, uh, which uh, traditionally covered a set uh, series of uh, topics, uh, among which also the inhabitants of a city. And it is uh, through that literary tradition of the Laus Urbis that he can connect with uh, uh, the idea of a city as a kivitas, as a community unity rather than just a topographical uh, entity. So as uh, uh, Biondo's work culminated in the Italia Illustrata, we see something similar in uh, Sanderos. Uh, his uh, work on the county of Flanders uh, is crowned by his uh, Flandria Illustrata. Sive descriptio comitatus istius per totum terrarum orbem celeberrimi, the most important region of the world. And you see in the title itself already the whole program that he wants to, uh, uh, that he wants to achieve. Um, uh, it is one big celebration also of uh, Flanders, uh, again with quite a complex uh, publication uh, history uh, and a very well thought uh, structure uh, according to a strict uh, hierarchy. Uh, you see some elements there on the slide. I won't uh, go into the details here, but I'll just uh, emphasize that the Flandre Illustrata uh, partly resumes and also expands uh, Sanderos' uh, earlier uh, work. Uh, for instance, all the uh, 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 treatises on uh, Ghent that I showed a moment ago reappear in some way or other in the Flandria Illustrata. So you have there's actually a, a process of accumulation um, uh, of his earlier uh, work uh, um, that uh, eventually uh, lands in the uh, uh, Flandria Illustrata. And that process of, uh, of accumulation and reorganization uh, of earlier work is uh, facilitated by the eminently modular structure of most of his uh, uh, work in that uh, area. What we see in every treatise actually is a series of self-contained units on several levels. In the case of the Flandria Illustrata, uh, which goes from a descriptio generalis of the entire county, uh, very systematically down to individual buildings and persons. Uh, and, and you see uh, all these uh, units that are partly derived from earlier works that are just reassembled, rearranged uh, uh, in the uh, Flandria Illustrata. What remains the same in all of his uh, work in that area is this uh, tendency at uh, illustratio, illustratio and this double sense that I explained. Um, uh, in the case of the Flandria Illustrata, uh, this illustratio is, is um, uh, conspicuously underlined by a uh, abundant set of lavish illustrations, which actually almost ruined uh, Sanderos. Uh, um, but that is also one of the, the differences then with Biondo, who could not uh, uh, use uh, illustrations illustrations in his uh, work, but it's uh, a very important part of uh, Sanderos' Flandria Illustrata. This illustratio is designed to display a very specific image of Flanders, a counter-reformation view of the county as a stable and prosperous uh, region, firmly embedded in Catholicism, uh, closely associated with the, Ham the Habsburg Empire. And uh, you see that uh, Sanderos uh, chose his dedicatees uh, very uh, carefully, and he went for none other than the Spanish king and the uh, states of uh, uh, Flanders. And this illustratio uh, also then suggests very much uh, in the tradition of uh, Biondo a model status of Flanders, just uh, what uh, Biondo tried to achieve for uh, Rome and Italy. Uh, um, uh, uh, Sanderos uh, 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 intends to, to achieve for Flanders. And uh, again, Ghent plays a central role, Ghent as the capital, as the leading city of the county of Flanders, and of course also uh, Ghent as his own native uh, city, worthy of imitation and patriotic attachment. And that is why the reader he has in mind is not only, uh, not only Candidus, benign, good-natured, good -natured, but also Philopatris, a uh, lover of his homeland. And what we see then in the Flandria Illustrata is an image of cultural continuity, of stability, uh, of traditions that go uh, back as uh, much as possible uh, to uh, ancient Rome and early uh, Christianity and what is systematically blotted out 
is um, all evidence of the territorial instability that was, of course, a real uh, factor uh, in uh, the Flanders of his own uh, time. We are here in the 1640s, uh, almost at the end of a very long, turbulent and painful uh, process of separation of the uh, uh, Calvinist uh, northern provinces from the Catholic uh, southern provinces, but none of that uh, in the Ita in the Flandria Illustrata. Uh, what we see is harmony, is stability, is continuity. So that uh, is all uh, basically I wanted to say. And the only point you need to retain actually for the remainder of this uh, talk is the this idea that uh, also a work uh, um, such as the Scriptores Flandriae is uh, in Sanderos' mind much more than uh, just a simple catalog of all Authors. It is an integral part of this sustained effort at illustratio of Flanders in this very uh, specific uh, sense, in this very Blondian uh, sense, if I may uh, uh, say so. And with that, I hand over to uh, Alexander. Yeah, thank you very much. I and will I'll share stop my the share here. Yeah. Know? So there you go. I share my slides now. Can you see them? Okay, um, perfect. Uh, so thank you very much. Um, after this uh, overview, I'd like to touch on uh, some technical details of a um, rather uh, limited uh, digital project on um, Sanderos' uh, text. Um, as you've just heard, Sanderos' um, Scripturis Flandria um, is a, a kind of the first comprehensive collection of bio bibliographic information on Flemish writers from the Middle Ages up to his own times. That is um, the first quarter of the uh, 17th century. Um, the approximately 500 entries in this bibliography are a precious source of information and have been used by bibliographers in later centuries. On a more abstract level, Sanderos's work is a collection of semi-structured information. Um, the entries deal with one author whom an Antonius Sanderos considers a scriptor Flandriae, that is a writer who was either active in Flanders or maybe a Flemish author. The entries are in alphabetic order and start with the name of the author in capital letters. And here you can see one example. And the entries are of variable length, ranging from a few lines to more than a half, uh, to more than half a page um, um, in length, um, and contain some short biographical notes and information on the literary scholarly um, or scholarly uh, works of the author. These bits and pieces of chronological, geographical, biographical, and bibliographical information um, could be transformed, um, one may, um, might think, into a machine-readable format and, with the aid of uh, digital methods, yield interesting insights that would not be immediately accessible with a traditional approach to Sanderos' work. Digital met methods might, as they often do, enable a different perspective on Sanderos' text. This is um, the basic assumption at the be beginning of uh, the short digital exploration into Sanderos' Scriptoris Flandriae um, that I would like to present you. This is not yet an actual research project, but rather first a test to see what could be reasonably achieved and if there lies any potential in this idea. The resources are at this stage um, rather limited. So um, is the digital expertise. Um, this, I think, illustrates a um, pre-interdisciplinary dilemma a neo latinists may end up in when it comes to digital research ideas. They may, may have an interesting project and an inkling that it could benefit from the cooperation with specialists from the digital humanities. However, they can have a hard time finding potential partners or even struggle to understand who they should be looking for. Be that as it may, let me now walk you through our first explorative steps towards a digital Sanderos. I must also warn you that some of the things I'm going to show you may sound familiar to those, to, to those um, of you who have attended the conference so far. At the beginning of most uh, New Latin DH projects, there is uh, the book. High quality scans of the Scriptoris Flandriae are available at the Bavarian State Library under a um, uh, no copyright uh, rights statement and can therefore be used without problems for our purposes. The first uh, OCR was done shortly before um, OCR 4 was released, so we used Ocropus. The ground truth generation was done by two student assistants. Um, the training process soon led to reasonably good results, somewhere well above 95% accuracy. Um, numbers and capital letters um, needed some additional post-correction. 
as the lemmata are typographically highlighted, uh, they can easily be extracted and transferred into a table. Our student assistants now set out to identify the people mentioned in the lemmata by linking them to authority files from the German National Library or the um, already mentioned YAF. Authority files, as we have already heard, are databases of authors, places, topics, and so on, and make them unequivocally um, um, referenceable by a unique ID. Uh, to give you just an example, um, here you can see the entry on Antonio Sanderos. Um, you can, um, uh, in the um, German National Library authority um, file, um, you can see that there is a unique ID D uh, at the top, a standard version of the name, name variants, and so on. So if they want to reliably refer to Sanderos, regardless of the actual spelling or the name of the name, you can use this ID. While there are many different authority files, um, YF is a kind of a meta authority file that collects data from more than 70 sources and is thus more comprehensive than any single authority files. Annotating the 449 lemmata extracted from Sanderos' Scriptoris Flandriae, uh, our student assistants could identify 148, that is 33%. This is, of course, far from perfect, but considering the fact that many of the writers mentioned by Sanderos sometimes were rather in inconspicuous characters of, if at all, regional renown, it is by no means a bad result either. Moreover, we asked our student assistants not to put not to put too much effort into the identification, so there's probably room for improvement once you start um, a more in-depth research. Nevertheless, many students of um, many of Sanderos' sources, um, um, many of Sanderos' scriptores are probably still to receive their authority files. VIAF aggregates, as I've said, data from different sources. Um, if we look, um, uh, if you look into our data, we find that the following sources are used. Um, you can see um, the distribution. Uh, the most frequent source is um, the authority file from the German National Library. Unfortunately, um, unfortunately, the data stored in these authority files is often uh, limited to basic biographic information, mostly um, date of birth and death. We have, for example, um, 42 times uh, an information on the place of birth, uh, 25 times an information on place of death, and um, 27 times an information on the place of activity. The place names are only strings, so there are no ID, which makes them a bit difficult to process automatically. So here's, um, it is nevertheless possible to take a quick look at the data we do have, that is the date of birth and death. From the chronological information, um, we uh, can see that Sanderos' focus lies in his own times or rather in his re recent past, whereas the Middle Ages are present only sporadically. To keep things as simple as possible, it appears reasonable for the moment to stick um, to Wikidata for uh, geographical information. Wikidata covers um, Wikidata covers uh, only 70 of the uh, 148 writers that could be identified, but tends to have more complete data, uh, data and most importantly, linked data. Just a quick note on Wikidata, although many of you will be familiar with it. It's basically an abstract machine readable and language agnostic version of Wikipedia. Let's take again a look at Sanderos now on wiki data that's a um that's the wiki data page on san antonius sanderos you can see at the top um and uh the wiki data id variants of his name in various languages and at the bottom a statements section which in this case uh, tells you that sanderos is an instance of the category human there are also a bit more informative statements such as um place of birth, um, date of death, etc. As you can infer from the fact that, for example, Antwerp uh, here is a link. Antwerp, um, Antwerp is linked to the Wikidata entry on Antwerp, which is useful as we will see in a moment. 
Wikidata in general is a very useful tool as you can ask it arbitrarily complex questions. This so-called Sparkle query, for example, provides a list of new Latin writers from modern day Belgium. As, um, as the people listed here have usually attached a date of birth, Wikidata can visualize the list as a timeline. This is a timeline or may, uh, making use of the coordinates attached to the places of birth, also as a map. With this in mind, let's return now to Sanderos Scriptores Flandriae. From Wikidata, we can obtain, as you've just seen, um, the coordinates of the places of birth. In our case, the places of birth of, um, of 50 authors are linked in Wikidata. That is, 50 entries have a born in statement. You can extract, <coughs> sorry, extract the places and their coordinates and easily display them, for example, in the uh, Daria browse, um, geo browser. It is no surprise that the center lies in modern day Flanders, but it is nevertheless worthy of note that Flemish writers could happen to be born far away as well. In a similar way, it is possible to display the places of death of uh, 48 people, as you can see here. These visualizations, um, similar to those shown earlier by Andreas Walka, are of course difficult to interpret because the sample is limited and we know little about the bias in our data. However, it would be interesting at a later stage to look, um, for example, if Flemish writers um, are actually more likely to die in Eastern Europe, as it seems to be the case here. This research becomes more interesting, of course, the more data you have. Sanderos' work contains much more information that could be analyzed. As it is essentially a commented list of books um, and works, it contains a great number of bibliographical references, usually the title of the work, the place where it was printed, if it was printed at all, uh, the date of publication, and so on. Places and dates can be easily dealt with in a digital context as we have um, appropriate data types for this kind of information, and as you've just seen. Bibliographical information, however, appears to be more difficult to handle as we have to deal with various levels of abstraction. We can refer to specific books and editions, and Andreas Walke has shown how, but not really to abstract works independently from its material support. It is not always possible to identify which edition, let alone copy, Sanderos is referring to in his work. It would be therefore interesting to think of an appropriate data model that can describe such relationships. This appears to be, to me at least, a still unsolved problem and maybe Wikidata could be a solution as it is flexible enough to define entries for single works as well. And maybe you can then um, a link um, from the um, Wikidata um, from the Wikidata entry, you can link to, um, uh, to copies or to editions uh, of uh, this particular work. A particularly promising potential of the um, uh, digital approach is the possibility to make a visible what is otherwise difficult to discern, for example, absences. Once we have um, uh, clearly identified the titles Sanderos lists in his book, uh, we can check his scriptures against library catalogs or, for example, uh, the short title catalog Flanders um, or, and find the book Sanderos could have plausibly mentioned and um, which texts he ignores for some reason or another. Another interesting aspect that I can only mention at this point is that of personal networks that are hinted at in Sanderos' Scriptores Flandriae. Especially when it comes to his own times, he refers to people he worked with, um, people he met, or um, people who knew each other. This information can help us to better understand the personal and cultural dynamics of Sanderos' age and, above all, um, could be mapped onto information from other sources, um, such as the aforementioned retrospective um, national bibliographies where co-authors, dedicatees and other people involved are listed. If we manage to make similar data from um, other projects openly accessible and reusable, we could draw a more detailed image of the dense and productive social networks um, of the period. This would also allow us to reassess the roles um, of people that maybe did, did not produce works by themselves, but nevertheless played an important role in the learned communities. <clears throat> I'm thinking of printers or people who um, uh, put people into uh, contact, for example. 
but this would be the subject for a whole series of research projects. Let's finally get back to our small research project. What is the planned output? Well, basically just an annotated um, TI XML file. The annotation will refer, refer to authority files and thus provide access to a wealth of more information. The digital text will help us better understand Sanderos's idea of uh, the problematic concept of Flandria, um, but it will also show us the limits of his knowledge, the bias in the selection of his material, and also the lacunae of his in his knowledge. At the end, I would like to um, point to some desiderata from the viewpoint of a small digital Neo-Latin research project. The potential of linked open data is huge. Uh, the Neo-Latin community should use it as much as possible and contribute to it. <clears throat> Just an example. On Wikidata, <clears throat> sorry, there are only um, 33 Neo-Latin works. So Neo-Latin is seldom referred to as a kind of a concept of an entity. Um, to be fair, this is somewhat mis misleading because we can um, look for Latin works published after the year 1400, and we get a list of um, 1,879 items. Still, even um, 1,879 um, is a rather low number considering the wealth of Neo-Latin literature, and there still um, remains uh, work to be done. Finally, what still seems to be missing is a digital Neo-Latin studies community. As a small project with a research idea and a vague um, idea that this, that this idea could benefit from a digital approach, it can be difficult to find people you, <clears throat> you could talk to in order to get advice or to learn more about the best practice um, to use, um, even in an um, embryonic stage of the project. It would be very helpful, I think, if this gap between the digital community and the Neo-Latin community were to decrease in the future and if the digital became part and parcel of the Neo-Latin methodology um, toolkit. In this way, it will be easier even for small Neo-Latin research projects with limited resources to tap the big potential of digital methods. Thank you.